Confer. Uh, people from the Confer Society, when they come through, are, I, I think, I think they're polite <laughs> uh, because I think this is an abomination of, of the, 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 the tree itself. Because it's in a lot of shade, it has become very vertical. It still looks nice though, it's yeah. not too sparse. Well, well, and I've had a fun time uh, pruning it. Uh, it's Tansu. Okay. And, and the foliage on is like a Brillo pad. Yeah. Uh, I but, mean, it's kept it a little skinnier than normal, but I think it looks nice. Yeah, I think it's in no, I enjoy it. You know, the fact they don't care for it, <laughs> it's not their uh, garden. It's each yeah. their own. I think it looks great. I love how you put more of the uh, Florida sunshine in here in the shady spot. Well, I, you know, I decided to try it here because uh, I tried it with a, a couple about two years ago, mm -hmm. and they survived, so I bought some more, and so far, so good. And if they thrive in here, it'll really oh, brighten up yeah. this shady spot in here. I mean, here. talk about bringing the sunshine to the shade right here. He's lighting this whole area up. It's going gonna, it's gonna to really make it a, a lot more, and it's bright overall in here. Well, and I'm, 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 I have a sedum here called Lemon Ball that it, it, this time of year doesn't really show off. But I point it out because the catalog say sedum and sun. Right. This is anything but sun. And this thrives in mm -hmm. here. And uh, so it's a good way to add some pop to some shady areas. I love how you have, I mean, he has so much stone throughout this garden. Everything is outlined meticulously. I mean, this sedum is just basically in its own little bed here. It's like going through, I mean, it's amazing how, how, how meticulously uh, crafted all these pathways are. When I was designing this part of the garden, uh, I've never put it on paper. Um, I just walked and created paths as oh, I walked. Wow. Uh, and Dr. Melchamp and I would walk around. Our neighbors over here, wonderful neighbors, bought the house because of the garden. Oh, I can imagine. And they've done a ton of work remodeling. They've added 1,400 square feet. Wow. Uh, brought in a bunch of boulders. Um, uh, I've gotten them interested in Japanese maples. Oh, cool, yeah. Uh, and they've, they've got uh, six or seven of them. Guys, uh, check out this Arita no Nishiki behind me in great fall color. That one in the spring will be pink and white. And, and Tom, let's follow you on down this other uh, okay. pathway here. You lead the way, I'll go wherever you want. This place is, uh, every turn you take me on is more interesting. So I'll just follow you. Passing a Chinese fringe tree. Oh, nice, nice. A little two drops of still labrada variegata. Yes, and the the big green one here. That guy is probably 11 or 12 years old. Oh, wow. Uh, keeping it alive, apparently outside of a pot. Uh, the jobs of still labrada are such great shade conifers, though. They love. They love the shadier spots. This is one of my favorites. Obviously there's no leaves on it now, but I love the shape of fascination. This is one of the best. I mean, I, I bragged on your line heart and it's out of leaf, but this is out of leaf. This is one of the best fascination shapes I've ever seen. We I have, can't imagine the yellow you get on this in the fall too. We have photographers in the spring set up right here, shoot that Japanese right. maple through the limbs. Oh, I can imagine. Because the sun comes up over there and it's a, uh, it's a popular photo. photo Guys, we're going into the uh, the Acer Valley. Here. Yeah, we kid that this is the Maple Walk of Maple Walk. Is uh, this Cotonoito over here? It is. And I've and when they're all in leaf, and I'm bringing people through on tours, I point out that I've got peaches and cream over here, and Cotonoito over here, and two trees couldn't look more dissimilar. And yes, they're both Japanese maples. Uh, wow. Villa Toronto. Oh, beautiful Villa Toronto. I love how it's a little bit smaller for a Leonard Loeb. I'm always kind of a little bit more compact. Tell me about this tabletop over here. Is that Kiyohime back there? Yes. And, uh, from front to back, it's 14 feet. Oh my gosh. Uh, 
I prune it. Uh, it takes me about three hours every winter to prune. I lay on my back <laughs> a half hour at a time, oh, wow. and I take off probably a quarter of it every year, wow. all the crossing branches inside. Wow. Um, Oh, you've got the perfect light coming through the trees through here. The Moriyama. Oh, very nice. I like to point this out to uh, people because of the small leaves. <clears throat> um, An Yes. Tiny little folds there. Look at check out check out the size of that. Even big old myth there. You can see how small that stuff is. Really tiny foliage. It is a pain in the tail to prune. Well, you've got some massive specimens. This is one of the biggest Nominischkis I've ever seen because, too. Because it's so twiggy, it 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 um, to make it look halfway decent, uh, I have to really work. Um, another uh, uh, ryosin. Oh, I love how you got it flowing out of the pot there. Benny Sheehan. Oh, wow. You've got a lot of cultivars in here. Twombly's Red Sentinel here? It is. This is Twombly's. And uh, my Shishi Gashira here uh, is one I took off a trash pile. Um, <laughs> Good rescue plant. Yes, uh, a nursery was getting ready to dispose of it because it had a lot of dead in it. And I said, don't throw it away. <laughs> it was in a 10-gallon uh, container. Wow. And I said, I'll take it. And I've been working off the last couple of years. And it, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, it, it'll take a couple more years and it'll look pretty good. Tom, let's go up here and look at one I saw earlier, that Akushimo. Yes. That thing is a showstopper right now. I know you mentioned it was a, a, one of your favorites when we were coming it, out for the is. color. Yeah, I like it for its color, and I also like it because it's got such an interesting leaf shape to it. It's so different than most of the maple. Guys, check out this Acer Palmatum Okushimo. Now, I've actually, you want to hear a funny story? I've had horticulturalists come to our nursery and had this in three gallons, and because of that cupped up leaf, I've had people go up and take it and put it under the watering system and <laughs> start to water it oh, because they thought, th it, was, th uh, th th thought yeah. it was a problem. Uh. They were like, oh, this one's been missing the water. I'm like, no, I promise that's what it should do. It's just fine. Thank you. Oh, when you get the sunlight through an Okushimo and that fall color hitting like that, oh, man, it's, it's, that gets my heart going right there. That's gorgeous. Long over here. Oh, nice. That's a beautiful specimen. It's a big one. Another look at that Kiyohime here, guys. And how big did you say this one was across? From tip to tip, it's 14 feet. Oh my gosh. Yes. So, the, uh, I'm not sure how many more years I'll be crawling under it, but we'll see. 
It's interesting how sometimes cooses will take a year off. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you get all the stonework in here? How do you get all the stone in here? Well, the, uh, uh, the, the stone on the paths, I've laid 46 tons myself. Jeez. It gets delivered at the top and I wheelbarrow it. Uh, to where it needs to go. Um, oh, I see why you're in such good shape. Well, it, uh, my back is uh, <laughs> probably not what it should be, but. Oh my uh, goodness, that's, that, that's impressive. It's, uh, well, my favorite red buds are, are these Don E golfs. Uh, oh yeah? Uh, I, I like these particularly because they're sterile. Mm -hmm. And and they bloom essentially all the way up the stem. Right. Uh, so the, it's definitely an interesting bloom. I think because of Cersei's uh, chinensis, it's got that almost closer to the bark. Right. It's it's all the flowers are right there. It looks really interesting. Well, plus it stays a more manageable size. These mm -hmm. are over twenty years old. Uh, so you don't get ten billion seedlings with I, I don't get <laughs> like canadensis. I don't get ten billion seedlings, and I also. Like my, I, I just cut down a forest pansy that was growing so irregularly, and it was too big for the space. And all right, so, Tom, tell us about this uh, this interesting area over here. I, I will definitely tell you this is the Taj Mahal. We rescue bunnies um, that have been abandoned, uh, pet rabbits that the sheriff goes to a, a, a eviction and they've left the rabbit there. And so we've got two bunnies living in here, butter and peppercorn. And we have one that lives in our house who doesn't play well with others. <laughs> um, but uh, this is a new hutch. Uh, the old one was rotting and we had a fellow who was a real craftsman come and build this. I kid, we call it the Taj Mahal hutch because I figure any hutch that I can stand up in um, oh, these are the these are the most pampered rabbits <laughs> yeah, in, the, the, in the world here. The, they lead a pretty good life, um, and so it uh, it's a lot better than being euthanized at the pound. So come on this way, Brian. Get a shot back in there too. My girls will love this. I'm being selfish. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> you need to bring them down some. I will. I will. We got a little guy now. We've got I've got uh, three babies. I've got Carolina's uh, right. five three. And Hicks is eight months old. Oh, so. that's wild. They, they keep me busy. It's, there's such a mix of plants in here. Some oak leaf hydrangeas. I intentionally put these two trees together, even though they're the same color. Yeah. That one is sort of a shorter version mm -hmm. of the one behind it. Oh, I love Oregon sunset. It's such a funky shape. Like yeah. I love how yeah. irregular it is yeah. in shape always. Uh, it almost just reminds me of like those African plane trees, how they get yeah. wide, like you see the shots of them. It's, it's a cool plant. I feel like we're going into a secret garden back here. Yeah. Check out this gate, guys. So th this gate is uh, where we live. Uh, and actually is th this area is not open to visitors on a daily basis. Makes we, sense. We tell people that they can come visit the rest of the garden, but not to come through the gate without us. So this is the secret garden. Yes. <laughs> so. Now, I don't know if we mentioned it on camera, so I'll ask you, how many pots make up this? Uh, 4,000 pots of dwarf Mondo. Oh my gosh. Uh, this project was started by my wife she was just doing some back in here and uh, and the story about how it actually ended up being so dominant is that when we bought the property that we started what we call the upper garden where the the uh, golf course turf was I was in charge of that turf <laughs> she was in charge of the backyard and the front yard so she got rid of the grass right so oh, it looks amazing. So she replaced the grass with dwarf mondo, so she didn't have to cut it. Oh, it's 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 a showstopper. I mean, and this handles the traffic pretty good through here. Oh, it, it, we have two dogs that run and play and do their business on it, and <laughs> right. it and it doesn't make any difference. Oh, it's beautiful. 
Okay, so I, I talked to you about it off camera, but you got to tell me about the Stamukiyama over here. I think it's gorgeous. I will. This, we're headed toward it. This is a snowball viburnum. Oh, nice. And in the spring is spe spectacular. Yes, this Tamukiyama over here was uh, a gift from my brother and sister-in-law uh, to my wife on her 50th birthday. And that was uh, about 21 years ago. Wow, that's a beautiful specimen. And hindsight being 2020, I probably wouldn't have planted it there, but it is there and uh, it has, it is beautiful. I love the fall color off the house though. It really showpieces yes, that plant for it sure. It does. And, and it's got an interesting shape to it. Once leaves are gone, it's got a very interesting structure to it. Oh yeah. Tom, thanks so much for oh, letting us come and enjoy this oh, amazing garden. You're uh, welcome. I hope you will come back. Let our viewers know where they can find you on social media or best ways to contact you. Well, we are at maplewalkgarden.com. We're also on Instagram and Facebook. And it's Maple Walk Garden in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, we'd love to have you come and visit. Hey, maybe we can host a future tour and bring some folks through here to see this place. It's amazing. Yeah. I know we'll be coming back in the spring. And uh, thank you for your and your wife's hospitality to let us swing by. This place is awesome. Oh, it's been our pleasure. And we've been, Lib and I have been friends with the, uh, the brothers since the early <laughs> days. You saw us at the tailgate markets too, and we were yeah, really small. When they were really small. so We're still we, small, but well, a little bit bigger than we were. Well, we, we have enjoyed watching the progress over the years and the, the phenomenal plants and service that they provide uh, to the gardening community. So, oh, Thanks so much, Tom. We cool. really appreciate you having us here. Guys, make sure to like, subscribe, and share. We really appreciate you tuning in today for our tour of Maple Walk. This place is special. You got to get out here and see it in person sometime. We're going to give you a full tour of this place as well as a spring tour. I know we're going to have to follow back up with this place because it's amazing. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. As always, take care. God bless. Have a great day.